We're spending a few minutes with Nate Brewer, candidate for Sylacauga City Council, uh, District Number Three, and. Uh, Nate, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, Jimmy Dale. How are you, sir? Good. It's been a long campaign, and you started early on for this position. Yes, sir. Me and my bunch, we started about June, 1st of June, because, you know, I'm a 10-month employee with the school system, and we went door knocking, just me, and I had some people following me in the cars, and we started back again this Saturday, and we've been door knocking, and we've been downtown, and we've been in restaurants, and we've done anything we hadn't done out of the ordinary besides come and visit you guys and ask for your vote on August the 25th. Uh, we started Saturday, like I said, over on Hamlet, over behind uh, Arby's, and we made our way back over to Main Street, and we met a lot of great people because some of those are retired, but some of those people still work. So I got a chance to see some people and hear some needs and hear some concerns that I hadn't been able to hear, and it was fun. I've enjoyed myself. For people who don't know Nate Brewer, who is Nate Brewer? Nate Brewer is 30 years old. I graduated from Sylacauga High School. I am a uh, son of Kelly Brewer and Tim Tallwater. My grandparents were Ronnie Brewer and Barbara Hatchett. She was also a brewer, of course. Her uh, brother was Mike Hatchett. They went to B.B. Comer High School. I am just a hometown boy that loves his community. I'm just somebody that wants to give back, and I've always loved to help people, Jimmy Dale. I've always loved to be that guy that can get things done in a capacity, and that, that's who Nate Brewer is. Nate Brewer is a servant. Mm. Talk about Nate Brewer's early years growing up here in Sylacauga. Oh, my. I, well, I've been here my whole life. Like I said, uh, we moved in the house that I live in now. We moved there in 1993. And uh, I still live there, and it's had some remodeling done to it. And my grandparents, they kind of raised me. And I had one of the, I still say I've had one of the best childhoods here in Sylacauga because I was making a point to you guys at the funeral home and some other guys at work that when I was a little boy, we got up on Saturday mornings and we went to Quincy's, okay, because Grandma didn't cook on Saturdays. We went to Quincy's, and I can remember coming downtowns and Stanton's, and I can remember Miss Kitty's, and I can remember some of those places and the sidewalks still packed, and that's what I would like to see now. And I had a great childhood over where I live. I rode my bike down Main Street, and I had some elderly people that I would take their garbage out, and I would cut their grass, and I rode my bike over to Louisville, where the uh, old block plant used to be, and rode all back around in there. And my childhood, early years, was great. Went to school at Indian Valley, had some great teachers and some great mentors there. I've been in the school system for, well, I, my 10th year started now, so I've been there a pretty good while, and I have just enjoyed living here, Jimmy Dale. Talk about, you mentioned some of the mentors. Talk about some of those. Well, some of my mentors are Robbie Richardson. That was tremendous God sent to me at a good time in my life, okay? Uh, of course, my grandfather was Matt Griffith, head football coach here for 16 years. Okay, Eddie Vonador, uh, Matt Hubbard, Tommy Porch was my high school principal that I loved and have tremendous amount of respect for. He is part of the reason that I am who I am today because I said that to say this, and Mike Gibbs, all those guys believed in one thing, and that was discipline. All those guys believed in doing things the right way. If you're not going to do it, if you're not going to put your hands to the plow and do it the right way, take your hands off of it, okay? Those guys kind of helped and built me into who I am and why I love to serve because they gave to me, and I've always said if I could ever pay a favor forward, that's what I would like to do. And, and I feel like me giving back to my community in this capacity, that's paying it forward like those guys paid it forward to me. You grew up in church. Grew up in church. We went to numerous of church. We was members of First Free Will Baptist Church on Twin Street with uh, Wayne McDaniel for years, and we ended up down at Estelle Community with Mark Deason. Okay, our church is one of the best churches around. I say just for my sake, we're non-denominational. We love Jesus. We love people. We've got a great board of directors. We've got a great uh, worship team, and our pastor is a loving pastor. And in my home. You know, if you got up with a stomach ache on Sunday morning, come on, come to church, you'll feel better. 
You know, it, it, I was one of those drug babies. You didn't have much, much choice. Did I you? didn't have a choice. You know, mm-hmm. and on Saturday nights or Friday nights, if you or uh, Lamar Johnson or some of those guys was putting on a singing, we was going. You know, we, we've been real active in this community as far as that fact. And I've been around singings and preaching, and I've been raised the right way. I've uh, done my part, and I had. I am blessed to have good parents and good people around me to help me become that guy, to raise me the way I am today, the right way. Your mom very important to you. My mom is very important to me. My mom had me at an early age. My mom had two parents that helped her raise me also. And my mom is the most loving person that a boy could ask for. I tell everybody all the time, they say, you sure do love your mama, don't you? I said, I do. You know, and I, and I tell people I love that because me and her have that great relationship. And Now, she don't mind calling me and saying, boy, you ain't doing this right. Or you really need to do that. You know, and she was a Christian lady, and she's raised me and to be a Christian young man and to show me the way that I need to go. So, You're involved with a lot of... Uh uh, in school and after graduation from school, you're involved with uh, a lot of volunteer works oh, in the gosh. community. Yes, sir, I am, and and I love every minute of. I love. I uh, volunteered with Babe Ruth baseball for a number of years, 13, 16 years there with James Sharbert and Greg and Jeff Vick and Rodney Tramble and the late John Hill and. We all kind of, I got to know those guys at a young age, and they taught me how to work on ball fields. And I went over there, and I got a job with Steve Masters later on with Cal Ripken, and I've worked with him on several different tournaments, and I just love being around kids. I love giving back in that capacity to show people that it's not all about receiving. Sometimes you have to give. Sometimes you just give and let them give to others and just kind of pass that forward. And I would like to see other people do that also. Uh, when did you begin to look at running for public office? Oh, Lord. I've always wanted to do this. You know, we, I've joked and cut up about it in high school, but always in the back of my mind, you know, I want to do that one day. And it was about around, I don't know. December, September, I started really looking at it heavy because I knew this was election year. I knew if I was going to do it. Did you it. talk to some people about I it? I did. I did. Danny Duke is a very good friend of mine. Danny Duke is that guy that I bounce my ideas off of constantly. And he tells me all the time, ah, you better double look at that. Ah, you better not do that. You don't need to go that way. And he told me, he said, you seek God. He said, you pray about it. And if you get a confirmation to do it, you do it. Well, i done that. I prayed about it. And... I felt like it was time, so that's why I done this, because I felt like my people needed somebody that they could call on, that they could count on, that would go to work for them as soon as they took the job. Why did you choose to run for city council? You could have ran for mayor, but you chose District 3 for city councilman. The reason I chose District 3 was because the people that's in District 3, you know, you have a certain amount of people that you serve. You know, the council as a whole governs everything going on in the city, okay? You have the mayor, then the city council. They govern everything. They, they make all the resolutions and they make all the rules, what we're going to do, what we're not going to do. And I wanted to be a part of that. I didn't want to be the mayor as the figurehead as a city. I wanted to be that guy making those decisions for these people because these people in District 3 need somebody, like I've said time and time again, that's going to go to work for them and work hard. And that's why I want to do that, because I'm a hard worker. I'm that guy that works constantly. You know me, I work seven days a week now. I never take a day off. I work at the funeral home, then I go to work at the school system. It's Monday through Sunday, you know, and that's why I want to go to work for District 3, because I'm a hard worker, and those guys need hard workers, somebody that can really get in there and get things done and meet their needs and get the problem solved that they have and meet their concerns and go to their houses and sit down and talk with them and just help them and ease them. You uh, understand that running for public office costs money, uh, advertising dollars, signs uh, and that kind of thing. People would see you Selling watermelons yes, and selling sir. cantaloupe. Well, when I first started this, I bounced some ideas off of some guys that's been in the community that has their own business, okay? Well, then the COVID hit, and I didn't feel right going back and asking those guys, hey, are you still going to help me? 
You know, now I had some guys, well, I say guys, they don't own business, but they were some friends and ladies that come up and says, here's 20 bucks, here's 50 bucks, good luck, Nate, we appreciate you. But I knew that wasn't going to be enough. And I knew that my funds only went so far, so I done one other thing that I love to do. I went and got some watermelons and just to see how it would go because I love people, okay? And I knew people would buy them. Well, it started going, going, going. Well, hey, I made enough to pay Kim Brewer. I made enough to pay Jim and Dale. So I just kind of kept that going. And that's how I funded my campaign. And I'm not bragging by no means, but I want the people to know I've spent around $3,200 as of today on campaign stuff. $2,800 to $2,900 was spent right here in Sylacauga, mm -hmm. Alabama. Mm -hmm. I gave back to keep the money circulating because I think if we don't give back to our community, if we don't shop local, if we don't take care of our people here, then who's going to take care of them? Uh, there was no big businessmen that wrote me big checks or anything like that. I had some good donors, there's two or three of them, and the rest of them I kind of, I had to work for and go get it done if I was going to be able to do it the right way. Because like I said, when we first started our uh, broadcasting, I'm all about doing things the right way. And to do it the right way, it cost, it cost money. A lot of hot days selling watermelon candy. Yes, sir. Right? There was a lot of hot days. But Jim Dale, you know, selling that helped me also because there were some people from District 3 that come by and says, hey, are you Nate Brewer? And I'd say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. And we got to talk and we got to communicate. And they got to meet the guy that was wanting to run for office because either I stuck a door hanger on their uh, door or they either met me and we didn't get a chance to talk much. But that helped me also get to meet some of the people. And I met other people out of districts because, you know, just because you represent a certain district doesn't mean you don't represent the city as a whole. You know, at the end of the day, we're all one community. And we've all got to be on the same page to get things done for each district because each district has its own needs and each district needs those needs met. So, and, and, and that's why I enjoy doing that also. And we're probably going to keep doing it. And I'm not to uh, say the least, but I would have some left over. You know, I'd bring some at the funeral home, but I would go around to Sullivan Court and Sullivan Towers and I would give them the rest because, you know, some of those are elderly folks that don't get to go out or maybe can't go shopping. So I would give them, and they would love, they would line up at the front door, and I'd pull up on Sunday afternoon when we got off, and they'd come out to the trailer, and I'd give them, and then I'd drive around over the West Walnut, and I'd give them some, and, you know, it, it was just good, because I got to meet a lot of people. Got to go to the nursing home mm -hmm. a couple of times and give, so it, it was just all around good. The, the COVID-19 affected all of us and still uh, affects all of us today. But uh, during that time where it was really, and it, it is kind of that way now, but you kind of put yourself out there and said, hey, if you need some help, I'll help you. Yes, sir, I did. Because COVID-19 done something to Sylacauga that hadn't been done, okay? We've got about 12,000 some odd people here in our city. And I knew there was going to be some people that needed some assistance, okay? I knew there were some shut-ins. I knew there was church members, and I knew that there was people that had parents here, but they lived far off, okay? And I wanted to be that guy to be able to help them because I figured I needed to show, prove myself to show everyone that I'm willing to go to work. Mm -hmm. So that's why I kind of put that ad here on the TV station and put it in the Sylacauga today because y'all get a lot of publicity, and I wanted people to know that they can call on me. And still today, if I'm elected, people will have my cell phone number and you will be able to get in touch with me and I'm going to be that guy there for you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to do the best I can to make sure that when you live here in Sylacauga, you're getting everything you need. Let's talk about the campaign. Election day is August 25th. and and. Uh some of the needs that you see uh, within District 3 and also within the city of Silicon. Yes, sir. Well, with me going around door to door, I get to hear a lot of different things. And, and, and there's a couple of things that keep repeating. Some things don't get brought back up, but some things just keep repeating. And one is a storm shelter, okay? We have a lot of people, senior citizens, middle class, young people like myself that's just starting out. We have a lot of young people that 
want a storm shelter that they can go somewhere and feel safe to. And, and I've been working with EMA a little bit, just talking and bouncing some ideas and trying to figure out how to get some funds to come in to support that. And I would like to see that in process. And the uh, traffic signals on Norton. And I'm not real familiar. I know that they cost a lot of money. And I know that sometimes we want to put money where we see it needs best or we, it needs to be over here first. But Jimmy Dale, and I've done it three different times, okay? I've done it first thing in the morning at 5.30 when I go to work. I've done it at 12 o'clock and I've done it at 5 o'clock on a Friday afternoon or a Thursday. If say there's something going on there at the TV, at the uh, radio station and there's the uh, hair raisers has got their appointments and then you've got the dog room in place and then you've got J&M cleaning Jim Dale, you got to pull out halfway into the street so you can see what's coming down the road, okay? And then Miss Betty Blaze, you know, used to, she walked back and forth to where First Federal South First is now. Used to be First Federal, and now she has to get in her car and drive away. I would like to see either that turn into a four-way or we get our traffic signals back working the right way. You know, we find money for things here and there. And I don't know how you finding the money works, but I would love to just sit down and just talk with everybody and somebody show me how can we find the money if we don't have it? How can we raise the money? Because we need a traffic signal. Mm -hmm. We need the four-way right there at Norton where the old Highlight Myers used to be because it, it's for our safety of our citizens. Our citizens really need that traffic. Like I can understand everything else, the way the uh, traffic lights come down. We've got the flashing stop signs, which is good because I believe if you didn't, you'd run right through it because I know I have. Forgive me. But I think if we, we need to find that money and we need to go to, it's time for we go to work for our citizens on that because that's what they keep harping on. And then the swimming pool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the swimming pool a minute and nobody take me the wrong way, okay? I am not in favor of this splash pad first. I, I have never said I didn't want a splash pad, okay? The swimming pool just services everyone. I've got senior citizens and I've got uh, day camp kids, which I know day camp's not in session right now. And I've got different people that go to that swimming pool when it's open. It's not open all year long anymore, but when it's open, they go and they enjoy themselves and they have a good time. My thing is the swimming pool needs to be the first priority when we start redoing things, okay? And the swimming pool is just a great asset. You know, we have a swim team we're used to, you know, and it, it was real active. If you don't believe me, you need to call Earl Lewis. He can uh, give you more information on that than I can. He coached it a number of years. Call Ray Holmes at Sylacauga Marine. He coached it. We had one of the best swimming team for years here in Sylacauga, Alabama. That swimming pool needs to be first. And then if we or the city decide to build a splash pad, let it be next. You gotta find a way to fix the pool the right way. I have said that since I've been on camera today. We've got to do things the right way. If it costs a little money, we have to put some things off two or three years down the road. Let's put them off two or three years down the road. That swimming pool services everyone. When Zach gets older, Jimmy Dale, he's not gonna wanna run through water. I encourage everyone to look up a splash pad. I encourage everyone to See what a splash pad really is. I want you to look at the design because I've been accused of talking about a splash pad with water shooting out. Guys, look at it and I want everyone to make their own decision. Okay, I want everyone to see the obstacles around. I want everybody to see the options. I encourage you to come to the city council meetings because that's where they talk about these things and you can have your input at the end. I want you to look at it and see the big picture, but my goal is to have a swimming pool because it services everyone. It don't just serve a certain few. As a city councilman, you are here to serve all, all 12,000 people in this community. That swimming pool would do that. So that, that's a, another issue that I hear a lot in my community, in my, especially in my district, and our trash pickup. You know, we took away trash pickup uh, for two days and we took away recycling, but we're still being charged at $18, $19. And some of my senior citizens are, you know, they do good to buy their medications and they do good to pay their rent. So that's a big thing with them. And you know, in the real world, people don't pay for something they don't get. You know, if you pay for it, you ought to be able to get it. So I'd like to work on that and 
get that back if possible. And there's just a lot of different things that I see. You know, everybody wants clean streets. Everybody wants your sidewalks and everything looking good. I believe businessmen, when they come into town to see a city, explore a city, to check on things, I believe they look at that to see just how clean the city is. Because if the city's clean, then okay, they'll help us keep our building up and they'll help us keep up things around our place. So I think we need to get back on board with that work. I don't mind joining the beautification club and working with them on that. I don't mind helping Reed. If I need to do something on a Saturday afternoon, I'm in. I don't mind any of that because I don't think it's the citizen's responsibility. Now, it's the citizen's responsibility not to throw stuff out the window, but I don't think it's the citizen's responsibility to walk down Main Street or walk down Broadway or walk down Fort Williams picking up trash. I think that falls back on us as city leaders and people in the uh, street department, people in other departments just to help out is one. Getting back to the, which is really a hot topic now, speaking of hot weather, is a hot topic, the pool, and there's conversations about building a, a, a new recreation center. Yes, sir. Uh, the, you know, the pool area is talked about as maybe being a part of that new recreation center. What are your thoughts on that? Jimmy Dale, if, Here's my thing. I've always been taught, as I was raised by an older generation, if you've got the money, you can buy it. If you don't have the money, you cannot borrow your way into the promised land. I do not see spending taxpayers' money on a brand new recreation center, not at this time. We're in the middle of COVID. We're in the middle of a lot of different things. The rec department is not outgrown. I've been down through there in May and June before all this really got going good. I've come in at different times. There's room. Church of the Highlands rents it out on Sunday. They have their church service there. Nobody hardly ever has uh, uh, reservations on Sundays. If they do, there's still plenty of room. You know, I've researched it. I don't agree building it on Main Street. I don't think that's a uh, good area for a recreational department at this time. I, uh, I really think that the splash pad needs to be second if we do. Now, I'm not saying don't build it because I would love to see a new recreation center. I'm just saying we don't need one at this time, mm. I feel like. Uh, I think the splash pad needs to go with that, with the recreation center. That way you can have two, but I still say you gotta fix your swimming pool first because it services more people than just that splash pad. So I, 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 I'm, I'm mixed emotions about that right now. I, I really don't want to get into a whole lot of details because I don't know all the ins and outs. I know what the meetings I have sat in on and I know what's been brought to the public and I know what's been said in public and I know what's been said in the council meetings because I've been going since December and I'm not liking we keep refinancing bonds to get the things we want. You know, refinance the bonds like when you take out a loan and you refinance it well, your interest rate drops, but you still got to pay that. If we keep refinancing, we're going to keep digging ourselves in a bigger hole in debt. And that's not good neither. Okay, so I, and I know there's a fine line. There's probably some things that I don't understand in that nature right now, but I am researching and I am looking and I am getting more information on it, but I just don't see why you keep refinancing to get things that we want or things that we think we want or think we need. What did you learn from the uh, political forum some days ago? I learned that uh, you can get real hot real quick. <laughs> I learned that uh, there are some people that care about our community. There are some people that love this place as much as I do. Uh, I learned that uh, you can't get everything out in three minutes. <laughs> you, uh, when, when you rebut and try to have a discussion you can't get that out in a minute. I learned that uh, there are some, like I said, there are some great people. There's great people like you and Bruce and Ken Brewer and the, uh, all the media that just kind of got together and put that on that we still have people that love Sylacauga. And I think if we get more of those involved like you and Bruce and Ken and myself, because y'all love Sylacauga as much as I do, because you, you've been here a number of years. You've been doing daybreak a number of years. Kim Brewer has uh, had Sylacauga today. Bruce has been around a number of years, former mayor. I just think if those guys keep going, we can kind of pick up, because one day you guys are going to retire. Somebody's got to fill that gap, okay? And I got to looking around, and there's a whole lot of people that come out, but not a whole lot of people said nothing, you know? And I got good responses on my speeches, which I know a number of candidates did, and, and I just learned that it is okay to 
come together and it is okay to have a agree to disagree uh, argument. So I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. Uh, how are you encouraging not just in District 3, but mm -hmm. voters throughout Sylacauga to go to the polls and vote? Here's the deal. If you don't vote, you can't complain. And that's what I've been telling folks. If you don't vote, you don't have the right to stand up and say, why ain't we doing this? Why ain't we doing that? This is your community. They passed it years ago where it is your God-given right. It is your justice to your country and to your city to go vote. And that, that's kind of what I've been telling people, and people have responded. I've uh, registered a number of folks that wouldn't register to vote in my district, registered a number out of my district just to help them because they want to vote for president, they want to vote for this, they want to vote for the city election because you live here. You have a chance to control your own destiny because you're going to vote the next, for the next four years of leadership and office. And that's what it's all about. You have got to take control of what you can control. You know, you've got to pray and seek and find God to show, let him show you the way to go because that will kind of help you make your decision on who to vote for. It's very important to go vote. Final two minutes with Nate Brewer. Why should they vote Nate Brewer District 3? I want you to vote Nate Brewer for District 3 because you believe in him. You believe in a boy that has become a man. The Bible says when I was a boy, I played as a child. But when I become a man, I put away childish things. And that is what I have done. I want to go to work for you. I want to go to work with you. I want you to help me help you. You know, you've got different needs, and I've heard your needs, and I've heard your concerns, and you need somebody that's going to fight for you. You need somebody that when you call them, things are going to be taken to City Hall, and things are going to be handled in a godly manner in a way that you can be proud of. You're going to get things done with Nate Brewer. You're going to get things fixed the right way and things done the right way with Nate Brewer. And that's why I asked for your vote on August the 25th. You support Nate Brewer. Thank you. You not only love Sylacauga, you love America. I do love America. I think America is the greatest country that we live in. You know, we have a right to do a lot of different things that some people don't have the right to do. Some people are eating off the floor overseas and some people are being killed. And we have the right to live in the greatest country mm. that God has made. That's why we're saying God we trust and God bless America because we are America united under one. Good luck in the campaign. Thank you, Jimmy Dale. Nate Brewer, candidate for Silicon City Council District 3. Thanks for watching. My name is Nate Brewer and I'm running for Silicon City Council District 3. Help me help you. On August the 25th, you're going to determine the next four years of our city's leadership and I'd like to be the one to represent District 3. I'm not going to make you any promises I cannot keep besides I'm going to work hard for you and I'm going to work with you. I'd like to clean up abandoned houses, overgrown lots, and our people need a swimming pool they can be proud of. On August the 25th, you vote Nate Brewer, District 3. You won't regret it. May God bless you and God bless Silicon.